Kevin Capo, California Art in Cultural Context, a significant California artist, Thomas Hill. Thomas Hill was born in 1829 and lived until 1908. He's a famous artist and he's famous for his landscape portraits of Yosemite National Park. He's considered one of the greatest and best California artists of all time. This is despite the fact that he actually was born in Birmingham, England. When Thomas was 15, he moved to America with his family. He began study at the Pennsylvania Academy of Design, where he learned the Hudson River School style. And basically what that was was a mid-19th century American art movement. And some of the artists that he actually studied with, which turned out to be very famous later on, were Peter Frederick Rothermel and Benjamin Chimney. Uh, this movement had a really strong romanticism, romanticism influence, which you can actually notice in a lot of Hill's work. Um, some of it has, some of his work actually has uh, women depicted in it, um, and as well as a very kind of flowy, really kind of beautiful look to it. Um, this is one of the most famous paintings, actually, of all time, depicting one of the most famous situations that ever happened in U.S. history. Um, this is Thomas Hill's The Last Spike, 1881, and it's a, you know, it's a very influential, uh, thing that he's trying to depict here. Um, it was actually the connection, it was the last spike that was driven into the railroad connecting the first transcontinental railroad in the U.S. And, um, you know, like I said, it was a very influential moment in U.S. history, and uh, Hill was the one who was actually able to depict that with this pretty famous painting. There's a few uh, controversies surrounding this painting. Um, I believe he got a few of the people, apparently, were incorrect. Um, I believe a few of the people who were right in the middle of there, right around the spike, I guess some of them apparently were not there. Um, this is kind of open. No one's really been able to uh, prove it, but some people say that he got the painting wrong. Um, after moving to California, uh, Thomas Hill, he visited Yosemite Valley nine years after opening his first studio. Um, he opened up his first studio and it actually turned out to be uh, very unsuccessful. Um, he tried to sell a bunch of his uh, paintings, but um, due to financial hardship and him not selling his paintings, he actually moved west to California with his family. And uh, this was actually when he first visited Yosemite for the first time. Um, when he was first there, he actually uh, was kind of taken back by the beauty of it and um, began to start doing landscape portraits of it. And uh, this is actually what went on to make him as famous as he was, was for these um, Yosemite National Forest landscapes. Um, Hill's primary... Uh, primary media for these paintings was um, oil on canvas. Um, he actually pretty much stuck with this type of painting throughout most of his career. Uh, pretty much all of his famous paintings that you've seen online or in books or anything like that, uh, the media has been oil on canvas. Um, when Thomas was doing his, uh, when he was doing his paintings, he focused um, a lot of his design around this French expression, uh, en plein air, and basically, as you can kind of guess, this what it means is, it stands for in the open air. And when Hill did a lot of his landscapes, and he did a lot of these paintings, he actually did them outside while he was at Yosemite looking direct, directly at them. And this kind of uh, brought Hill more in touch with nature, kind of got him one with his canvas, I guess, if you want to call it that. And um, I guess it, it gives him, uh, it gave him a lot of time to work on all the details and get all the really, really small details of the image that he was looking at into his paintings. And you can really see those in most of his paintings. I mean, they're just, they're, the depth of them is unbelievable. It's just, it's phenomenal. Uh, Perfect example. Um, Indians fishing in Yosemite. Uh, this was done in 1900. 
Uh, this is another oil on canvas that uh, Thomas Hill did, and um, it's uh, it's really phenomenal. He, he incorporated a lot of the waterfalls that were in Yosemite into his paintings. You'll notice them a lot. If you look to the left in the background, that's El Capitan. That's a famous um, climbing pitch that's in Yosemite, a big rock formation that you'll also see in a lot of Hill's paintings. Um, he really was uh, very good as far as creating depth in his paintings. Um, like the foreground, middle ground, and background, all of the clouds and all of the mountains in the distance progressively fading back and um, kind of getting lighter and having the colors not be so direct. Um, it just gives his entire, gives all of his paintings just this depth that you can't help but avoid, you can't, you can't avoid it basically. You feel like you're kind of drawn in to all of his paintings. Here's another example of just that. The depth, like I said, is just incredible. This painting, uh, View of the Yosemite Valley, 1865, is uh, kind of a different style for him. Uh, the, previous, the previous painting had a bit of a sketchier, heavier style that um, Hill kind of got into in later on in his career. But some of his most famous paintings were ones just like this, um, with just unbelievable detail. Um, and everything, you know, the depth and everything is just, it's spot on. The colors, everything, it's phenomenal. Um, one of the primary te techniques that Hill actually used in his paintings is impasto. Um, the style of painting actually refers to the artist applying thick layers of paint directly onto the canvas. Um, this leaves a textured surface, and this actually just gives the painting more depth and more expressiveness and just kind of you know, adds that little something to the paintings that's just, uh, just gives it some a little bit more. So as far as the significance of California art is concerned, um, it's definitely a lot different, and I have a lot, uh, different look on California art since I first started this class. I didn't really know too much about California art. Um, but as far as the characteristics are concerned, um, California art, usually it's very bright. It's got lots of color. Um, and it really kind of just gives you this, this essence of freedom. And uh, it seems to kind of reside in each piece of artwork. Um, I don't know if it's whether there's the, like the background of the artists who are the ones that are actually creating these pieces or just the sense that people have of thinking of California as kind of a, a getaway, kind of a, you know, you think of the beaches and stuff like that, and people think of it as just an escape from the real world, I guess if you want to call it that. But yeah, I mean, it's one of the things about California, like I said, is just it's the freedom that's kind of behind each one of them, you know. Um, some of the attributes that actually make up California art, I'm just state them, uh, vivid colors, like I said, um, a real sense of state pride, and um, there's a huge, you know, right after the gold rush and everything, huge, huge tourist market started up. And um, California really took a hold of it. If you look at all those, if you look at all the advertisements um, for people inviting tourists to come to California right after the gold rush, I mean, they really make it look like a paradise. And people needed that. Um, people needed that after, you know, it was right, the uh, Great Depression kind of had everybody down in the dumps and, you know, People needed to get their spirits lifted up, and this whole era actually kind of made way for California to represent that lift that everybody needed. And uh, it was definitely represented in all of the art that was going on during that time. Uh, California art, I mean, um, another couple attributes that are uh, attributed to it is uh, contemporary designs and innovation. Um, California artists have always been kind of known for pushing boundaries and, uh, you know, coming up with new contemporary designs and new ways of doing things which back in the day uh, would be, you know, not normal or just something that people won't do. Uh, for example, a person who was great with this was um, Robert Arneson. 
uh, his sculpture, the California artist. Um, if I if I had to pick one piece of artwork that really kind of depicts California, and if you had to pick what is California art, I would probably refer people to this sculpture. I mean, it just embodies everything, like that kind of, you know, the sunglasses kind of representing the SoCal kind of lifestyle. Um, he's kind of hippie looking, uh, the disheveled concrete kind of beneath him showing, you know, what some of the cities might kind of look like and represent. I mean, it's just, it's California in a nutshell. But the overall, um, if I had to really, really pinpoint what is California art all about, it would, I would have to go back definitely to uh, those tourist advertisements during the gold rush era. I mean, pretty unbelievable what they did, actually. These beautiful posters and stuff in, in the magazine ads that they had just making California look like such a paradise with the palm trees and, you know, the fresh oranges and pretty much almost every single one of them had, you know, an image of a beach with a woman on it or a beautiful woman in a bathing suit. Uh, what more would you possibly want? Um... And like I said, it kind of went back to that time where after the, um, after the, uh, excuse me, Great Depression, um, you know, people needed a lift. People needed an escape from all the negativity that was going around. So, like I said, these, uh, these tourist advertisements kind of provided it, for you know, a safe haven for people to go. And... It's pretty influential what these advertisements actually did to the U.S. because you look at these old advertisements, and even today, they're still very attractive, and they still make people kind of want to, you know, kind of want to come there. But what it basically did was it, it's been so influential that it actually kind of makes people subconsciously think of California, even today, when they imagine a picturesque, like, perfect place to live with all the palm trees and stuff, you know, especially Southern California. And um, it created a movement, you know, a way of life, fashion statement. That's it's never going to leave us, you know. All the vintage clothing that people are starting to wear again today, it all kind of hails back to these, you know, this gold rush era of Southern California and what California embodies. So to wrap it up, in conclusion, uh, you know, like I said, Thomas Hill, he's a phenomenal, phenomenal California artist, even though he actually is from Europe. Um, his Yosemite photos are, or paintings are just unbelievable, and they really represent a style that California has kind of become known for. These kind of, uh, you know, super detailed paintings, as well as these really kind of whimsical ones with um, with the uh, Hudson River School style that he had in a lot of his paintings. Um, one thing, too, I didn't mention earlier, he was actually very influential. He brought California art to Europe. Uh, he actually moved back to Europe after he lived in California for a while and brought some of his painting styles back to Europe and brought it out to them, and they started incorporating it into a lot of artwork that they had as well. Um, in conclusion, California art in itself, I mean, it really makes people happy and think of California as a picturesque place to live. And, you know, it's, it was a great movement, and it's a great style, and it's still... You know, it's still being done today, and it's probably not going to leave us anytime soon, if ever.